Hello and welcome to Super Motherload. We talked about this briefly in Descending, the indie horror game at which we played. I adore this game and I've been wanting to do a Let's Play on it for quite some time. I'm not going to do it on Hardcore mode because, you know, I actually want to beat it in this playthrough. So let's go to Normal. Now, I have played this a fair bit, as you can see, with some of the characters which I've got unlocked. There was a brief spoiler there, so sorry about that. Um, and I've played through the game as pretty much everybody except Tom Keeling over there, but if we scroll through, I've played through as most characters. I haven't unlocked him yet. He's the one character I don't have. Uh, maybe we'll try for him in this playthrough. Uh, we could play as Anna. I don't think I've played as her yet either. We could do that. And my favourite character to play as, not just because, you know, she's a ghost and can therefore drill through lava without being inspired, but just because Lake of a Dog deserves so much better. And they actually acknowledged it by putting her in this game, which I quite like. She's quite fun to play. We've got the computer, and of course there is the mysterious Simulacrum and Abaddon there, who we will come back to later. Uh, let's play through as uh, Anna, actually, because I don't think I've played as her, so... So one thing I should say about this game before we begin is that it is a sci-fi horror. These horrors will not dig themselves, Gobran. It is a sci-fi horror game. Do bear that in mind as we go through. It's an interesting one, but I like it. This is it. Welcome to the new frontier. My name is Tiberius. I will be your main contact while employed by the Solaris Corporation. As detailed in your contract, your services are required to continue operations on Mars. Following the contamination of the surface base by saboteurs last year, business has been dismal. You will have continued access to all the major facilities for refueling, upgrading, and repairs, as Solaris has your safety and success in mind. Your task is simple, Employee 1001. Drill for precious minerals and process them at the surface base. We have reason to believe some of the rarest of minerals will be found deeper beneath Mars' crust. Good luck, and know that Solaris Corporation is indebted to your bravery and adventurous spirit. Oh, and before this one, he's gone away, now this one pops up. This is Mr. Fixit. Assigned to assist you for the duration of your visit to Mars. Here we get started, in case you slept through the training program. I have not, so I'm going to skip all of that and explain it as we go. Everything will be fine. And the fantastic soundtrack begins. I absolutely love this. This is probably my favourite song in the whole game, actually. It's so, so good. So if this is looking familiar to you already, that's probably because you may remember the Flash game, which is actually the, like, I guess the precursor to this. So this is why this is Super Motherload. Developed by the same studios, X-Gen, Motherload was a Flash game. You could play it on, like, Miniclip and stuff back in the day and other such places and other Flash game websites. But on that, in Motherload, same kind of thing really, you were digging for minerals beneath the surface of Mars and it's part of a mining expedition and things were not quite as they seem and the deeper you dug, the stranger and more bizarre things got. Ah, we lost that because our cargo is full. Yeah, so as we go through, You've got to maintain your fuel, you've got to bring minerals to the surface to sell them, etc. You've only got so much space in your cargo holds, but we can buy upgrades as we go through. But yeah, this is technically classed as a sci-fi horror, uh, and thankfully it's voice acted, so I do not need to worry about doing the voices myself. Oh shit. Uh, certain minerals are more valuable than others. Um, you can refill yourself at the surface. Uh, you can have the, the upgrades platform over here on this blimp, I believe. I just accidentally used a bomb by accident. I believe certain characters have extra abilities, so Anna, who we're playing as, might have unlimited bombs, because that wasn't being used up before. So that is a slight perk, at least. I will take advantage of as we go through. 
So here we go into the shop and we can buy upgrades already. You can buy an enhanced drill bit if we fancy. You can buy a bigger fuel tank, more cargo, strength of your hull, etc. And the smelter which will come in handy much later. Plus we can expand our radar and things. So we've got a bigger range so we can see where we're going on the map. And this song is absolutely gorgeous. It's called Frontiers, I believe. I mean, the whole soundtrack is so, so good to this game, but this song in particular is just... I love it. I really, really do. This is probably my favourite. Uh, and you've got your health to worry about as well as you go through, I suppose, but... It's not really too much of an issue. In the original game, if you ran out of fuel, you exploded. Thankfully, in this, they have upgraded that, so... Oh, hello. The city is not kept in channels. We overreach the cell if you Signal's been terminated. Well, I'm sure that's nothing to worry about. I'm sure everything will be fine. But yeah, if you ran out of fuel, uh, you died. You got uh, a game over. You had to save regularly because, you know, it was a flash game. It didn't manually save for you. In this, if you run out of fuel, you just move slower. You don't actually die. Unless you're playing on hardcore modes, which I believe challenges you to make it much like the original. And I've just noticed what's appeared on the right of the screen there. I'm sure you have as well. It is... Uh, it, it didn't escape me. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, get it without destroying it. I'll have a go. And, um, yeah, I can't drill through that, unfortunately. We can scroll through and use the other bombs, but we've got unlimited ones of these, so might as well, you know, make use of them. Let's drill through over this way, see what we can see. But, yeah, you can actually get the original Flash game with this. Well, obviously it isn't Flash, because, you know, Flash is no longer supported. Ah, okay, I can do... There we go, I can do that. And we can get extra money from picking up the various bones which we find. Because the money is going to come very in handy for upgrades. So I'm going to take those. Now we've run out of fuel, I can't dig anymore. That's the other thing, yes, I forgot about that. So yeah, you, you don't die, you just can't dig anymore. But we still have the uh, ability to use our uh, little propeller to get in and out, so that's fair enough. Um, I'll just quickly sell things. Come on, sell it faster, there we go, thank you. Go back to the upgrade shop. Uh, what else do we want? The smelter will come in handy, actually, so I'll take one of that. More cargo size, because that basically just means more money when we come back to the surface, which is just a win-win situation. Faster drilling speeds, faster flying speeds, faster moving on tr uh, treads across the ground. You can buy more bombs and things. Reserve fuel, don't really need that. The teleporter we don't really need. Nice item to have, though. Uh, and, you know what, that will do me nicely. There we go, now we have our radar in effect as well. The graphics in this game are absolutely gorgeous as well. I'm not entirely sure how long a playthrough lasts. It can be anywhere from 45 minutes to maybe a couple of hours. So now we've got the smelter. When we dig things in succession like that, we actually will get different materials which will be worth more money when they're combined together. And also, combining them together... Our experience in the kinetics of it sabotaging our life support systems. There is too much time left. Polaris, send aid! And why would the mechanics be sabotaging their own life support? That's a bit bizarre. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, smelting things together will save you uh, spacing your cargo holds so you can get more stuff in it, but also combining stuff together, they're more valuable so you get more money out of it. So basically, it's, it just is a win-win situation. I don't remember what this does. It doesn't do anything. Oh, this is to repair because we haven't taken any damage. Well, I can fix that. There we go. That's the thing that repairs us because I took damage. There we are. 
So we don't really know what's going on at the moment. The engineers are sabotaging their own life support systems. Uh, I wonder why. I mean, you might have a little bit of an idea of what's going on based on the cold open to this video, which is a little bit of a giveaway, quite frankly, but it's too good to just not use. Now this game is actually set, to, uh, if I read the description of the game actually, which I've got to the side of me, this game is set during the alternative Cold War period, which is why we're playing as a Russian lady, but we also have various American um, kind of uh, well, characters, that's the word I'm looking for, and uh, other miners which you can play as and different excavators etc um, as we go through. Come on, sell that, thank you. And refuel, and back down we go. So, yes, it's set during an alternative period on the Cold War where we landed on Mars. So, why we've landed on Mars is never explained, I don't think, if my memory serves me correctly. But the deeper we dig, the more rare things we'll find, but the weirder and weirder it's going to get, just as a fair warning. This game is quite bizarre, but I do love it. I also just, I like, generally like the aesthetic as well. Anyway, Cold War era history stuff interests me as, as is. And as we're exploring here, actually, we're seeing we can find little puzzles like this to go through on the map. And we can dig our way around to get extra things which are worth more money. Like the... You can see, also see there we've got various hammers and sickles which are buried in the ground. If the Cold War communist slash Soviet theme wasn't already explicitly apparent, but I love that art style. As I said when we were playing through Descending, I really do like the... There's even a Sputnik satellite over to the sides on the far uh, left hand side of the screen there. But yeah, I do really enjoy the Cold War uh, aesthetic uh, from the Soviet Union. I really, really do. It's just, it looks cool. I like it. I even use it as an inspiration for some of my music. Uh, the aesthetic, that is, for the uh, like the cover sleeves and things. So it's not been too bad so far. No weird shit has really happened, although we intercepted an SOS signal. And we don't know what's going on at the station down below. We'll get to it eventually. The deeper you dig, uh, you get to more checkpoints and things. There are various mining stations underground, which act as different save stations, refueling checkpoints, etc., which we'll get to. And if you die, you also respawn there, I believe, as well. And it saves your progress. I'm not entirely sure how deep it goes. It's several tens of thousands of feet. The original Flash game is installed with this, actually, and you can pick to play that as well. If you would like to see me play through the original game, I can do it. The soil you will be encountering from here on will be more treacherous, and as such, Solaris wants to financially reward your efforts. Take this token of appreciation and upgrade your rig for safer passage fuel. Well, thanks for that, Tiberius. No, I'm just going to dig straight down until I can't... There we go. I can't dig straight down anymore. So if you want to see me play or just to go through the original Flash game of this, which is much harder, but also much weirder, please do leave your thoughts in the comments section on that and let me know if you'd like to see it. And actually, full, full stop, just comment your thoughts about this game generally too. If, do you remember the original? Did you play the original Flash game back in the day? It's very nostalgic for me going through this. I have played this quite a few times, as you know, from un unlocking so many of the characters, but I... Oh, I need to refuel. I forgot to refuel, did I? I don't remember everything that happens, and it has been several years since I've played this, so we will see as we go. I do have most of the achievements, but I don't have all of them. I'm just going to dig straight down until we get to that station. I want to uh, see if we can get down there to find out what's going on. And also, you know, um, start finding some different minerals and things, because the one ones we're finding are fine, but I want to get to the valuable shit, you know? You also get rewarded for chaining several of the same minerals together. 
as is going on right now. And I think the maximum you can get is a... Actually, no, I'm not going to say. I'm not sure what the maximum is. But you do get rewarded for consecutively chaining the same mineral together. Interplanetary is the highest one, okay. I'm going to break that off. Oh, hello? Did you catch what he said at the end there? There's an agent acting on our behalf that cannot be identified. I do believe we still receive all broadcasts from the surface at this current depth. We supplied the employees of Solaris Outpost with as much entertainment programming from Earth as possible. It appears you came across an old rerun. Did we though? Because that was your voice, Tiberius. Now this is where things start to take a turn. Do we completely trust Tiberius based on what he's just told us there? I don't know if we do. Oh, and our cargo bay is full. Uh, now this is where the teleporter would come in handy, I suppose, actually, but we didn't buy it, so back in a sec. And we're back up top. Hooray! Now this game also does have multiplayer, so if you'd like to see me do this with Demo or Joe, or maybe they'd like to play this as well, let me know. They might enjoy playing through this with me as well. You could, I've never done this on multiplayer. I don't know what multiplayer mode is actually like. I've only ever played this on single player, so that could be interesting to experience. But yeah, based on what just happened there, do we completely trust Tiberius? I'm not entirely sure. Disregard any f in uh, uh, disregard to any transmissions that aren't from the Solaris Corporation. Does that well? One would assume he's receiving the other transmissions as well, which is why he's telling us to ignore them. But why would he want to? And also, like, he's hiding behind a helmet? Maybe he's a robot. He's not, but... It was what I first thought when playing this for the first time. Is it possible that Tiberius is a robot? Ah, and now... We've, ex we've encountered soil which I can't drill through. I need a stronger drill bit to get through that. Different coloured soil requires different drill bits. Can we get down any further before I run out of fuel? No. The, I think the next mining station is 2,000 deep and we're at 1,500. Maybe I need, do need to upgrade my fuel tank. Oh, back in a sec. Right, so let's get some upgrades, shall we? I will upgrade my fuel tank as we desperately need it. Uh, I don't know what upgrading the smelter does actually, I don't quite remember. Increase the drilling speed and our flying speed actually so we can get out of underground faster. Uh, I will upgrade our hull strength, why not? And do, 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 do I want anything else? Uh, no, I don't think I do at the moment. Uh, I'll save the money we've got, and we'll go back down. Try to carry on from where we got to. It is, you know, drilling straight down. If you're playing Minecraft or something, they tell you not to do that, don't they? In this, it's not too bad because you can spot things as you go and you can branch out. Plus, you can use your explosives and things to kind of shape the environment. But we're, we're pretty much done with the surface level stuff. Unfortunately, I can't quite remember how far down we have to go to get to a next checkpoint, so that's also another reason why I'm di drilling just straight down. The graphics in this are quite good, actually. I do enjoy how they look, and again, like I say, I enjoy the aesthetic of this. Did you know this game also got uh, a board game release? Yeah, X-Gen made an official board game release of this. Oh, hello. I wonder why they would do that. But Tiberius also said, oh, don't trust any other transmissions. Ah, and speaking of Mining Station Alpha, which is where we just got a communication from, we have made it. And... Checkpoint. Oh, hi. As you dig deeper, soil becomes denser and harder. Need to upgrade your drill bit. Yeah, I already knew that. I've explained that already to the lovely audience at home. 
so we, now that we've gotten to a new station, we can also buy different things in this shop. They sell different um, weapons and bombs and things, de and depending on what station we're at, that rock drill would come in uh, for very, very handy actually, but it's also two million, so we can't afford it at the moment. Again, this is another great track in the game. I forgot about this one. This is very funky. Oh, right. Bombs can be used to blast through rock. Yeah, yeah, I know. I already knew that. What I don't remember is the controls for how to activate the different bombs, so bear with me. Right, I had to rebind my controls because they were unbound, and in doing so in the process, I've accidentally also added a new character, um, <laughs> who, Carl actually, has got pretty much most upgrades completely done, um, so I can actually do I mean, look how fast he's going, because I've, pl I've played as him the most. Not just because he looks like the engineer from TF2, but I've also accidentally now made my character I was playing as drop out, so bear with me. Uh, you know what, I'm going to go back to the main menu, and we will come back in when I've fixed this. Whoops a daisy. Right, so we are back in the room. Okie dokie, right, and I've also rebound my con I did rebind my controls. Oh, I need to do it again, hang on. Right, rebound my controls again. <sighs> But hey, at least we got through that by accident. We've also now received a quest which has shown up on the bottom of the screen. On the right, no, left-hand side. I do know my left from right, honestly. I was looking at the bombs on the right-hand side over there, which is, believe it or not, called Explodium. And we can use that to combine with other materials to make explosives on the go with the smelter. But we need to dig up two Sputnik satellites. Or beacons, as it calls them. Oh! Okay, that's interesting. So, I don't know if you noticed, but the picture was flickering then, and there was an actual person who was on the transmission, as opposed to the whatever the hell AI, like, virtual spaceman thing that we were talking to before. So... There is a bit of a mystery going on here. I mean, we kind of knew that already, to be honest. That people are not acting as themselves, and there is something strange going on beneath the surface of Mars. If this were a Doctor Who episode, he'd already have worked it out and gone home by now. Unfortunately, I'm not the Doctor, so I can help you. Although well, what I can do is dig out these extra explosives, because they will come in handy later on. Uh, and I've run out of fuel, so I can't dig anymore. Back up we go! Hey, editing Shiki here, which is why my voice sounds a little bit different. It turns out, playing this through again in my own time after I recorded this, and I had already annoyingly edited and exported the video, there was a cutscene which we missed in our playthrough, which adds a little bit more context important context actually into the game and is quite a good little bit of further world building and adds to the horror which we were talking about in the playthrough which for some reason I don't know why it didn't pop when I played through this for the first time uh, in quite a while actually and I thought something was missing I remember there being something extra and creepy about station beta so I have sourced through and found the PS4 footage of this, uh, who I will credit where I obtained it from in the description because they got it in their playthrough, and I'm just going to splice that in for you now, which also explains why the character etc and music and things all suddenly change. It's because I've had to borrow this footage. So I'm splicing that in now so you can take a look for yourself and see what you make of this. I hope post beta is a lie. This isn't a fueling station, it's a laboratory. And we're the rats. They're experimenting on the employees. Yeah, that is very, very creepy. I'm sure that won't play into anything further going forward. Not at all. We don't have anything to worry about regarding that. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the Let's Play, shall we? I'm going to upgrade my fuel tank again. Oh, I can't afford it. Never mind. Um, 
yeah, so there is something weird going on, but now that we have... We're all going to get more quests as we go, actually, but now that we're getting the requests from Tiberius to pick up the satellites to improve the signal, maybe he'll be able to explain what's going on. Or somebody at Solaris will explain what's going on. You may or may not have noticed on the map above us as well, there's a few weird shapes and things forming which we can see with our radar. Now, if we do so, we can actually pick up different things as we go. I can't drill upwards, unfortunately, but I can drill down. And I can not get through that one. Can I get through it with C4? There we go. Well, that destroyed most of that, but never mind. Yeah, so you need different bombs to solve different puzzles and things. I just need to find another Sputnik satellite, and I'm not sure where the closest one is. Because this game is randomly generated. Ah, there's, a, there's some fuel sources down there, actually. Which could be handy to get. You can pick up fuel as you go. Unfortunately, I need to go back to the surface anyway. Uh, so never, we'll forget the fuel deposits for now. But I need to empty my cargo hold again. There we go. Drop that off. If you refuel... Uh, can I buy anything else now? No, I don't think I can. I'll just keep looking for this extra satellite. I know there was a couple above us, but I'm trying to see if I can find one that's down here. I don't remember if they show up on the map or not. Anyway, as I was saying, this game is randomly generated, so every single time you play it, stuff will be in different locations. At least, I believe it is. I have not been able to notice otherwise, given how much I've played this, but... Come on, could you really, realistically expect me to memorise the location of every single possible ore thing on the map? I don't think so. Eh, yeah, there's another one. We'll just grab this one over here because it's easier. There we are. Excellent work. This is a priority message. There's an entity that's been affecting the minds of our excavation teams and posing as Tiberius. You must not listen to it. From now on, all official Tiberius transmissions will be coded with imaging. Uh, so that's him talking to us from Mission Control at NASA or um, whatever the name of the Russian Space Agency equivalent was. I do like the art style in this, I have to say, it is quite cute. So, I have been discovered. You need not fear me. I will be asked my identity to learn more about you and your people. I need so long without voice. Descend. Find me. All the knowledge I have is yours. Ah, for a chance to speak again. I await your arrival with anticipation. Yes, so this is the Birdman, which we briefly looked at before. What? Who was that? After I unjammed the signal, your homeworld sent schematics to upgrade your drill. I've already performed the upgrade for you. You should be able to dig deeper now. Well, that's handy to have. So, yes, uh, Mystery Birdman there is affecting the minds of the drilling crew, it seems, and the deeper we go, the more and more affected we are going to be. Now, what I wish this game would do, which it doesn't, is that it started to affect us, the player, as well. But sadly, to spoil it slightly, it doesn't do that. It would be nice if there was some graphical interference or distortion, or you started to see hallucinations or something, much like the other uh, engineers and miners, uh, which we will come across are experiencing themselves, but you as a player don't actually ever experience any of that. Which is one minor bugbear I have with the game, actually. Because, you know, it is tagged as sci-fi horror. Now, oh, fair enough. I mean, that is a fairly sci-fi horrific premise. We've just received a message from a mysterious entity who lives underneath the surface of Mars who is affecting the minds of the crew and has been impersonating mission control in order to learn about us. That's a pretty horrific concept already. This is like a plot to a Star Trek episode or something. Fair enough. Or possibly even Doctor Who, as I mentioned. Doctor Who is more likely now that I think about it, but... We don't really experience any of the weirdness, and I really wish that we did. Now I'm going to come up from this one from above, so I can get the diamonds. Hooray! 
and... Okay, we can't combine the diamond with anything else. I think you can later on to get emeralds and rubies and things, but... Hey, yeah, our cargo hold is full now. I am going to drill our way back up. And once again, I can't remember how deep the next mining station is, so we could be going for some time. It could be like 5,000 feet or something. Maybe it's at 7,000. I don't know. All I do know is that we're taking a lot of damage whilst I'm trying to get us out of here, so bear with me. Do we want any more upgrades? Uh... Heh, it's like Formula One car noises. <laughs> nice. Right, now we've got some more bombs to work with. Hooray! Not that I particularly need them f at the moment, but they will come in handy later on. In fact, let's grab some now and destroy that there so we can get in here and dig this stuff up, because that's going to come in handy. Because the emeralds are valuable. My Duolingo is screaming at me to do my lesson for today because I haven't already done it. I haven't gotten any curse notifications on that yet. So like, you know the memes you see on um, social media of people getting bizarre Duolingo messages? I haven't really experienced any of those. I don't get the weird ones. I just get it telling me that, uh, you know, you need to do it for today. Ah, oh, you've forgotten. And ironically enough... Um, I, I forget regularly, so yeah, it's probably gotten to the point where it should be sending me curse notifications to, you know, make me do it. But I keep forgetting. I get distracted, okay? Trying to do stuff like that when you've got ADHD is very difficult. Now, as we dig deeper as well, we will get more quests as we go from various parties. I do believe that we'll get more, mo mostly from Tiberius, um, but we'll also need to do quests to upgrade our engine engine capacity and our drill and etc. So we get more materials as we go. To basically improve ourselves as we dig deeper and pick up more valuable things. Now this is something we haven't encountered yet. Lava. If I drill into that, it hurts me. If I drill into that again, it's going to kill me. There is an engineering repair thing there, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get to it. Because if I drill through the lava, I will die. I can pick up these bones, though, which will give me money. I want to get to the next mining outpost, if possible. If I keep going, hopefully we'll get to it, or maybe receive another transmission. Give us an idea of how close we're getting. I'll just go past for different materials for now. And uh, I'm out of fuel. Well, that's what the explosives help for. So we can get deeper. <sighs> Maybe not. <laughs> oh well. We've cleared our way a little bit. We've got all this stuff to dig. I mean, just look at all this stuff to excavate. We'll come back to this for sure in a second. I'm just going to slowly make my way up, so bear with me a moment. Right, so we have... Oh! We upgraded our... Uh, not our hull. Um, our... What should we call it? Our... Storage capacity, so we can pick up more things. Hooray! If we were playing as Like of a Dog, then... The lava which we encountered before actually wouldn't do much damage to us, which is handy. Um, she is immune to taking lava damage. She's also immune to fall damage as well, and bumping into things doesn't damage her because she's a ghost. If you don't know the story of uh, Like of a Dog, um, if you want to be really, really depressed, go look it up, but it is extremely sad. So I can actually now repair ourselves, and we can pick up the diamonds, which is handy. I believe we could destroy lava with the bombs, actually. Okay, no, we can't. Never mind. Oh, well, at least we can get one to replace it. Hey, we found it. Oh, we got there. Our, our station has seen a significant rise in aggressive behavior. This is a request to Solaris Corporation for medicine to help treat the afflicted. He looks like the guy from Ghostbusters. 
And the music's finally come back. Hooray, I was starting to miss it. Right, let's drop all our stuff off. Can I... I can dig through this. There we are. By the way... Watch your hull meteor take damage when digging through magma or melted steel plates. Yeah, I know that. TNT won't destroy magma or melted plates. You'll need to use a different type of bomb to get through. Is it the electron bomb? I think that's the one that gets through that. Detonate bombs in midair cost six million. Well, that would be handy to have. Uh, and the electron bomb is out of stock here. That's fine. As is for TNT, actually, but let's upgrade our fuel size so we don't have to worry about that as much. I'm just going to dig through this to take the damage, and we can repair it off. Because, you know, we kind of do need to get through. Probably a little bit of a waste, but, nah. Yeah. We're lab rats down here. We've become murderous monsters. Survivors are safe for now, and we barricaded ourselves in the cargo bay. If you can hear us, please locate our facility and send aid. This would be an excellent premise for like a, a horror movie or something. I really, really would. I love the story of this game. We don't get much of it, but we get enough that the world it crafts does really interest me. And I would love for us to get more of it, but unfortunately we don't. What we get is very, very limited. But I am just going to quickly get all these emeralds. Oh, boss. Smelters later to create animal... I know that by combining stuff. Explodium is very useful, yes, I know, but I want the money at the moment from all these. Just look how many are there. Gosh, right. Well, I think we'll be able to ex afford those bloody um, exploding... <laughs> in the mid-air things from that. That's an instant 32,000 we've got there. I'm just going to quickly go back and dig up some more. Ironically, as much as I enjoy this, I'm not super keen on Minecraft or anything. Um, or Terraria, for that matter, which is another 2D mining game, but... I don't know if it's my nostalgia from... Oh, I just wasted one there. I don't know if it's my nostalgia from having played the original Motherload Flash game, or the fact that you know, the story and stuff is there, because Terraria doesn't really have a story, does it? It's kind of what you make of it, like Minecraft is, but maybe I enjoy it because we've got the narrative structure and I dislike those because of a lack of one. I don't know. Yes, and we're learning low on fuel again, but I don't know. The lack of a narrative does kind of bug me. Oh, we wasted some of those. Oh, that's fine. We'll make do. We got a lot there. And let's go down a little bit deeper and see what else we can find. But yeah, Abaddon, uh, the mystery birdman. I kind of have spoiled his name a little bit because I did reveal him by accident on the title screen. Um, but it was my, I couldn't reset my save data to start again, unfortunately. Even though I'm playing on a different computer. Uh, the third computer, actually, I've played this on since I've owned this game. All my save data and stuff is stored in the Steam Cloud. I can't reset it, so... I, oh, I forgot to refuel. Whoops. I can't find an option to reset my Steam Cloud data for this game or anything, so it would be nice. I would like to unlock all the achievements and the characters and stuff all over again, but it is what it is, I suppose. See if we can get another transmission. So, it wasn't actually Tiberius before, the real Tiberius, who was telling us to disregard any transmissions. It was Abaddon telling us to ignore the transmissions from the other engineers so we wouldn't pay any attention to his machinations of him messing with people's heads. This isn't what they promised. Our people are changing, turning against us. We must escape. If anyone can hear us, please, you must... And I think we just lost contact with her for good. Because, <sighs> you know, that's not a horrifying revelation or anything. But... Yeah, with him affecting people's minds and stuff, that was actually him doing that and telling us to ignore it, which is a little bit sneaky. Now, it's a shame that, as I say, you don't get the stuff affecting you as a player too, because I really wish it would. It would add more flavour to it. XGen Studios, if you're watching this, please update this game in some capacity to add some more actual horror elements to it, like hallucinations or things going wrong, not being able to trust your own equipment and things. It would make it much more interesting. 
Not that it isn't already interesting, mind you. I do love what is here, but you know, it would just make it better. Right, let's see if we can get a complete skeleton this time. Oh, maybe not. Balls. Yeah, there is an optimum way to dig, and I am not doing it, but yeah, We're getting there. I mean, I don't really go for optimization. You can do that. I believe you can speedrun and complete this game in a fairly decent amount of time. Obviously, having more upgrades helps, but I do wonder how fast you can complete it without the upgrades. Or it depends who you're playing as, I suppose, too. Because if you're playing as Laika, um, then you would get uh, through the game much faster because you don't take lava damage, do you, if you're playing as her? Oh no, she's still alive. Whoever's evening this transmission, it means we're getting closer to its source. My name is Quinn Grisham, a research scientist employed by the Solaris Corporation to monitor the seismic activity below the surface of Mars. Our people have gone mad. They... No, no, she's been cut off again. And now it's just... the silence. I'm detecting a life form. It's coming from Station Gamma. Looks like there are ample fuel reserves left too. Yeah, Station Gamma is down here. This is just a floating fuel station. Thank God, I'm picking you up on our scanner. We've been left to die down here ever since our signal beacon was destroyed by a runaway digger. If you can collect the pieces and return them here, our surviving team can repair it and, with a bit of luck, once again contact Solaris. So, it's never explained who the Solaris Corporation are, but uh, now, now that we've got here, by the way, Station Gamma will refuel us for free, which is quite nice. Uh, um, it's never explained who the Solaris Corporation are. We're in an alternative Cold War era timeline. Uh, the Cold... Um, the one thing I will say, actually, if we pick these up, um, if you pick up something that's more valuable, it will replace something of less value in your cargo holds. Just thought I'd mention that. So we've got another quest actually, so we need to pick up more bits and pieces. Um, so we'll find those as we go, but yeah, it's never explained who they are actually. It's never really said. So if we're in a post-Cold War... not post-Cold War, but alternative Cold War Earth... Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. Um, I've I've never seen that dialogue before from any of the other characters. I wonder if that's because she's um, Soviet. I do have to wonder. So, again, it was just more mystery, and I kind of dig it. So it's empty our uh, cargo hold here. Can I get more bits and pieces? I can. And I can increase my fuel tank again. Hey, we don't need to worry about that for a while. Oh, I say that, but... Can I dig through these yet? No, I can't. Bugger. Right, let's get back down to Station Gamma and do some more exploring down there. Because she's going to give us free fuel. I probably should pick up a teleporter at some point, but it costs more money than I have and have been able to get so far, so... Meh. That being said, with wanting to contact uh, Solaris and stuff, they are not completely innocent anyway. Now, so we're talking about we don't know who they are, but they have kind of sent people here and just left them to our own devices. Even if Abaddon wasn't here, people may have started to have gone mad anyway, just without the supervision. You pe leave people alone on a isolated location like this for a while, and they're gonna start going mad. But I guess Abaddon is preying off of that, preying off of people's fears. We don't really know what he wants. He was talking about all the knowledge he has being hours to obtain, but he never explained what that knowledge is. We don't know very much about him, so why would we take his offer? Playing the original Motherload game, you wanted to maximise your fuel tank as early as possible just so you could get more stuff, because you, you would, like I say, you would die if you ran out of fuel in that game. So you wanted to maximise it early so you could actually explore stuff to get money to, you know, be able to do the game. Because you could literally dig like one, two, maybe ten spaces. You'd get ten spaces down and you already would get like a fuel low warning. It was a little bit 
stupid, really. It was a little bit silly. Uh, where is this other tool? There will be one around here somewhere. We could go higher up to go looking for one again, but we don't want to go up. We want to go down. Because all the good shit is down here. We will find it eventually. We're guaranteed to come across one. There is enough in the world to complete all the quests. I just don't remember... Well, there's no point actually me saying I don't remember where they all are because this game is randomly generated, so it wouldn't matter if I could remember or not. So we'll refuel and we'll, we'll keep looking. We'll be down here somewhere. I believe they do show up on the map, but I don't remember what they look like on the map, so that is kind of not very helpful. Blimey. Very graphic. Right, let's bomb our way through here. The fact that you don't see it as well, I think, is just as effective. The horror you don't see is, is arguably more effective than the horror you do see, but so I do wish we got more bits and pieces. Our third and final call for assistance! As Solaris has chosen to remain ambivalent about the situation, I only assume they are aware of the dementia outbreaks related to the artificial air generators below the surface. That or something far worse is down here with us. Well, that's a cons bit of a conspiracy theory, um, but we do know there is something down here with us. But again, he's being driven mad, as are all the people on Mars, which is disturbing. Um, but... Yeah, the fact that Solaris Corporation isn't helping them is a little bit suspect. I don't trust Tiberius much, quite frankly. Um, and I don't think we should, because, well, if he's our man in charge, why is he not doing anything to help? Now, you could argue, well, it takes a lot of effort to be able to get people to Mars to be able to help. We don't, but we don't know how the tech has advanced in this alternate timeline. We're, this is set in the 1970s, 1980s during the Cold War, and we're digging on the surface of Mars with robots and giant drill things. The timeline has deviated somewhere, but I don't know where. Also, I am sat on top of the last bit, so let's pick it up. You got them all? Then there is hope! Let's see here. Yes! Of course it's working! Now I send a message home! More plans to upgrade your drill bit. You should be able to drill any soil at any depth. Hooray! So we got our maximised drill bit now, and we're back at... At a checkpoint, we've made it to Station Delta. And we are seven and a half thousand feet down. I can't remember how far this goes. Alright, let's look at what's in the shop over here. Uh, convert less valuable things into platinum. Uh, yeah. I'll take that. Take that straight away. And... Drilling speeds and... Hmm. I won't take other bits. Oh, we need other bits. One more thing. We need the electron bombs to melt metal plates. Okay, so we do need those. Right, I'll go back and grab some. Uh, where are they? There they are. They're a lot of money. They're very expensive. I can only afford one for now, but we will take it and use it. Uh, where? There it is. So we're going to take damage from that. Yeah. Actually, before I start playing, I'll upgrade my hull if I can. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. So we've got all this. Um, yeah, this we can turn this instantly into platinum and just take all of it. 
and actually convert it into magnets from combining platinum as we go, which is even more valuable, and put more stuff in our cargo hold. So don't mind me as I just mine my way through all of this entire layer. A massive point actually as well, we're still receiving communication from the Solaris Corporation um, because they are sending us schematics to upgrade our stuff. Now whether that's automated or whether it's Tiberius or somebody else in mission control, I don't know. But why are they communicating with us and they're not communicating with the other science stations? Because you think they would. Although I have just had a second thought which could explain maybe why we don't encounter any hallucinations from the Birdman. We could be immune. Now, I'm sure that's the developer's answer for why they haven't implemented any stuff like that in the game. Oh, you're just immune to it, but I kind of wish that we weren't because I want the creepy shit. Now, we've been recording for about an hour and I believe we're getting... Oh, hello. You must remain safe. We fear this creature is dangerous to not only the Mars operation, but to Earth itself. We ask you to investigate, but remain alert. Your safety is of the highest importance to us. Yeah, sure, I'll do your dirty work and your bidding for you. I mean, you're not here, you've got nobody else who can, and everyone else seems to be being driven insane, so I guess I've got no choice. But, you know, if we didn't do that, it wouldn't be any fun, would it? Come on, let's face it. So, let's see what we can uncover the deeper we dig. Again, another fantastic music track which is playing in the background right now. The OST for this game is absolutely gorgeous. I really wish I could remember the name of the... Uh, the, music, the music artist who worked on the soundtrack. I do have it saved somewhere, but I don't remember his name. But sound designer guy, or guys, girls, non-binary entities, and whatever else, whoever worked on the music for this game, you did an absolutely fucking phenomenal job. But that goes to the whole studio, really, as well. Like, the art style for this is gorgeous. The voice acting is good. Some of it's cheesy. But it's very, very good. The aesthetic is absolutely lovely. I just wish it was longer and we got more of it. I wish we could talk with more of the scientists. I wish we could get some of the horror elements and stuff. And the fact that it is a little bit lacking in those places is sad, but good god is this game good. It really, really is. I mean, that's why I've played it so much. I'm not entirely sure how much my playtime is, but... I've played through and completed it dozens of times because I've unlocked nearly all the characters um, and you need to replay it through to completion to unlock all the characters in the game and I wouldn't do that if I wasn't invested in it so I believe Station Delta up there as well is the last station I don't think there's another one underneath because we've got Station Alpha at the surface uh, there was no Station Beta at all. Actually, hang on. No, maybe Station Beta is at the surface and Station Alpha is Earth. That would make sense. Because uh, we encountered uh, Gamma and Delta as we've gone down. So... That would make sense. Unless I'm misremembering the signs. Uh, I, which I read as we went through. I don't know. But yes, as I was saying before I got interrupted by Tiberius, we have been recording for about an hour and I think we have uncovered most of the various research stations or mining outposts. I don't think there's any more. So I'm not sure, because I don't remember, to be brutally honest. But we'll keep digging and see what we find. There could be another research station of some kind below us, or there just could be... I don't know, the depths of hell. That was actually the twist to the original Motherload game. Slight spoilers to a game which is over, quite literally at this point, 20 years old. Um, but if you haven't played it, I wouldn't be surprised. But as you dig deeper into the surface of Mars in the original game, uh, Mr. Natus... Oh, hang on. Be wary of transmissions from those you call Master. 
They have experimented on those that came before you. Now, that's the appearance of Tiberius, uh, just uh, Birdman with Tiberius's voice saying that. Now, he's probably impersonating him again like he did before, but why would he be saying that? Could he be saying that just to fuck with us? To convince us to, like, you know, not... Uh, uh, to convince us to join him? To convince us not to work for Solaris anymore? Why would he want us to join him? So, yeah, uh, Abaddon is a curious fellow, but I wonder why he would be saying that. We don't know if that's true as well, what Abaddon is saying, if he... If um, Cyrus and Tiberius were experimenting on people, I mean, they may have done by leaving the people to die at the other research stations. Like we know they didn't help, and various people did get killed by the others who got driven mad. Is that what he's talking about? It's again, it's it's never explained. You kind of have to make up your own minds. I'm just throwing ideas at you and seeing what sticks. You could disregard everything I'm talking about and think I'm talking a load of shit. I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be the first time that people do that, because I usually do. Having the gift of the gab, it comes in handy, but also does mean that I just say nonsense and I'm not actually thinking before I talk. I am literally just ad-libbing and doing this live, live commentary as I go. I'm not entirely sure what's coming out of my mouth, but that's part of the fun. But good lord, can I talk? I, I could do, I could probably do this and just talk non-stop bollocks like this for, well, I know I can, but for literally hours. Um, there is a video which we did of a replay of Castlevania, the original for NES from 1986, and uh, we never uploaded it. We probably should have done, um, but I... It's a truth behind the curtain, really. We played it, um, and we got to the final boss, and Castlevania is a fucking hard game. And even though we've beat the game before on Joe's channel, and I have beaten the game myself in my own time, I wasn't able to do it again. Um, I couldn't uh, just get my head uh, around beating it, so we got to the final boss and got stuck. Um, and we literally played for an hour, if not more, on the just of a boss fight alone, never mind the overall other hour of actual gameplay we did to get to that point. And I was just talking non-stop the entire time, and um, that might be why I wasn't able to do it, just because I was distracted by talking, uh, as we've surmised earlier. Uh, that does happen, because I do lose my train of thought entirely, because, you know, distractions and ADHD go brrr. But, um, yes, as we were playing through, uh, the file size was absolutely fucking massive for over two hours of footage of just Castlevania, and fucking... Editing it would have been an absolute fucking nightmare. So we just... We never got around to it, and now I'm not entirely sure where the files are. So even if I wanted to upload it, I can't anyway. So that's a video which... Is probably likely... Never gonna see the life of day. Uh, the life... The light of day. It's never gonna see life of day either, because we're never gonna use it. But, um... I... Yeah, just essentially I wasted two hours of my life recording that, and I'm never gonna get that back, but... Never mind, I suffer for my art, I guess, if that's what you want to call this. I mean, art is subjective, I suppose you could interpret it as being art in some fashion, but let's face it, <laughs> there is no grand art to this, I'm just talking bollocks. Um, ah, tis. Uh, no! I wanted to uh, get the sickle which is buried there, but never mind. When we get the upgrade that allows us to drill through solid rock, we'll come back to it later, if I remember. I probably won't. <laughs> Actually, hang on. I can combine these for a regular TNT, and we can! Actually, if I go up there, it wouldn't destroy it. Hooray! Extra money for free. Fantastic. 
Now, I'm going back up because I want to investigate some of the upgrades at the earlier shops because we did neglect those before because we didn't have the money. But now, we might have, well, a lot more. But also, like, there's all the various gems and things which we couldn't get to before up here, so let's dig these up. Now we can get out of them various diamonds and rubies and things which we left behind because those will be valuable and we can take them to the shop. And the scrap metal from the hammer and sickles and the Sputnik satellites which we dig up don't actually take up any inventory space either, so we can basically we can just get those as extra extra free money. And who can say no to free money? Another reason why I might be talking much more bollocks than I normally do is also because I'm currently recording this at half past two in the morning. <laughs> But, you know, the things I do for you, I suppose. Now, let's empty our cargo hold and let's take a look at the shop. Yeah, Station Beta, about 4,000 feet down. Maybe there was a Station Alpha that was a bit further up, about 2,000 feet, and I just forgot about it. Let's take a look at our upgrades here. Mid-air bombs is 6 million. Okay, fair enough. Um, I will buy a teleporter, so we have one now. But I think it only takes you to a Station or to the last station which you used. I think, if my memory serves me correctly, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think it takes you all the way to the surface. I don't want to just use it uh, to find out because it would be a waste of the amount of money which we spent on it, which I've already forgotten. But uh, it's we do have it now. Uh, it's an option if I really, really, really need it. The hammers are also more valuable than the sickles, I've just noticed. Not sure if there's a symbolism behind that, but... Because the hammer and sickle symbol was the farmers and the factory workers, wasn't it? Uh, and I guess us being an engineer on a mining uh, expedition is a worker rather than a farmer, so maybe that's why the hammers are more valuable. Or I'm talking bollocks again because it's currently half past two in the morning. <laughs> Oh, there is a station, Alpha. Okay, I know, I completely misremembered. That's fair enough, I suppose. Completely forgot about it. And misread the signs. Now, let's take a look at what's in the shop over here. Hull region. Which is two million. Okay. Uh, again, cargo size, so we can fit more things in to get more money. That's just going to be infinitely valuable. Whenever you're playing games and stuff, if you can find something which gets you more money faster, get it earlier on, because the more it will pay off in the long run, because you'll be able to accrue more over time. It's just a much better way of doing it. So, as we go on, that's just going to come infinitely more and more, more in handy. But we've come all the way back up here now. There is still some valuable stuff up here, just not as much of it. But I want to see what was at the surface anyway. To if there was anything at the surface um, outpost which is valuable. But while we're here, we'll get like the Sputnik satellites and things, I suppose, because they will just, again, free money. Free money is hard to just say no to. And here we are, back at the surface. Uh, let's take a look in the shop over here. Oh, okay, that's just the alchemy which we already have. I came all this way for nothing. But TNT bombs come in handy, as do the electron bombs. And it does look like this character gets infinite T bombs, so that's handy to know. I didn't realise that when I selected her. Reserve fuel? I uh, don't really need that. And I can't max out. So I can increase the smelter, so I think we can smelt more valuable things from it now from combining stuff you can also go up as well if you want to there isn't much up here i think there isn't anything actually if we go up and we can just keep going and going and going eventually you do hit the skybox i'm not entirely sure how far up that is or maybe it does just stretch infinitely who knows let's keep going and find out shall we Okay, you hit you hit the ceiling at about 3,700 feet. I just took a bit of damage from that. I can't go any higher. And there is a cap limit on it. Oh well, down we go. Whee! 
See, if this was me in real life, I don't think I'd be as calm as my character is in a portrait there. My helmet would just slowly be filling up with poo. And of course, also, if I impacted the ground from full height there, we would just instantly die. Um, but, you know, swings and roundabouts, I think you do respawn. Uh, so if this was hardcore, you would get a game over and that would be it and we'd have to go back to the title screen, but we aren't, so hooray! Now let's get back to where we were. I'll be back with you in about however long it takes to get down there. Bear with. The fact that Solaris Corporation was allegedly experimenting on the engineers and stuff, now whether that's true or not, we don't know, does kind of give me Aperture Science vibes, I'm not going to lie. But then again, so did the artificial like style of voice that Tiberius seems to have. I'm not entirely sure if he's real. Well. We know he is, because there is a picture of a human portrait which looks like him, it shows up when he talks, but it could be, this could all be being faked, it could all be a robot which is just messing with us and it's like in a descending and it's HAL 9000 all over again, which is just sending us to die on the surface of Mars this time. Now I did briefly mention it earlier in the video, uh, and I don't entirely remember how much I did talk about it, but XGen Studios, the developers of this game, did actually make an official board game release of this, which is actually a lot of fun. An ex-boyfriend of mine and myself I did play it one time. Um, it was an absolute nightmare to get hold of. I believe it was only sold in either limited quantities or for a very limited amount of time, but I was thankfully due to a very helpful friend of mine who was a employee and a supplier person who deals with that sort of stuff at a board game shop which I frequent quite a lot. He was able to get hold of a copy of it for me to play and because like, I had been I had been coming in asking about if they had a copy of that game for literally and a shitty not comrade over a year but lo and behold eventually he was able to procure a copy of it for me and it, it's good it is quite enjoyable I mean it is basically just what you'd expect it's like playing this but as a board game you have your different uh, characters and things which have different abilities and things uh, you dig for resources and you sell them for money and exchange them for credits um, the the way that you dig is you have, um... Actually, you know what? I won't tell you how it works. Comment down below if you'd be interested in a board game video, and I will see if I can get hold of some of the board, geek friend, board game geek friends of mine, and we will look at maybe playing the board game for a video. I've been meaning to do some board game videos for a while, actually do some more IRL stuff with the hands on the sofa and the like, uh, like some of the blind bags and stuff which we did beforehand. So it would be a good excuse to do that again and let me know if you'd like to see a board, the board game look at this. I think it could be an interesting video. Right, we are back down where we were. Let's keep going deeper, shall we? Now that we've explored back upwards up there a bit, Let's carry on and see what we can find down here instead. We are encountering these new mystery objects as well. There's one just to the left of me down there. That's another quest item which we're currently not able to get, so we'll probably encounter that soon as well. We'll find out whatever that is. I, I can't remember what it is, actually. That's just not me That's not me just saying that. I genuinely can't remember what it is. Um, it's buried behind a lot of interactive puzzles and things, so we will need to find that out eventually. Now we're about an hour and a half into recording, we're coming up to quarter to three in the morning at this point. And I think the next quest trigger will pop soon. I am Pavel Bunchot, and I am sending an admission of guilt to the Solaris Corporation. Though I cannot recall it, I have murdered Kristen Yapovich, second in command of Outpost Delta. Well, there we go, at least we got another transmission there, but... That's dark and morbid, isn't it? Blimey. I told you, this game is sci-fi horror. Even though it's very light on the horror, it's heavy on the sci-fi. Well, I'm just going to dig out these skeleton bits for money. 
and get as many of them as I can before we run out of fuel. Which we just did. And I'm actually going to use my teleporter. Yeah, and that brought us to the last station we visited. Okay, so it doesn't take us all the way to the surface. That's handy to know. hope for this planet together we could rebuild our world. This is apparently your world, Birdman. It is not my world. I am not from Mars. I am from Earth the last time I checked. And I don't think you are, otherwise, you know, we'd have come across you by now. The ancient city far beneath the surface. Ah, these are the mystery items which he was talking about. We need to find six of these things. Well, that's what the electron bombs are for which are damaging our hull quite severely. Oh, Okay, we're on 1% health now. Gotta be careful. An incredible discovery. It's okay, it's called Unobtainium. It's the same bloody thing that they have in the Avatar movies. Alright, and I also, I am all out of teleporters, so I'm going to be very ginger as I get my way back to the surface. Well, not to the surface, but uh, the last bloody outpost. And, you know, when I say being very ginger, I don't mean selling my soul or anything. Alright, so let's go looking for more of this unobtainium stuff. I think it starts showing up at about 8,000 feet, so we need to get back down to where we were. And we'll dig up some more of it. And also, let's see what if we can spot the quest items on the map, actually. We can see if they glow a different colour, because it'll make them easier to spot. Because I don't recall if they do. Oh, there's one, but I can't get to it, because I can't detonate stuff in mid-air. So I'm going to have to forget that one for now. I need the mid-air detonation upgrade, which costs a lot of money, which I don't have. Oh, I didn't mean I wasted a bomb there, shit. Ah, oh, never mind. I'm trying to remember how deep the surface actually goes. I think it starts capping out around 13,000, possibly 15,000, and we're currently at about 8,000 or so feet down. I think, actually, no, I think we've gone to about 9 or 10. That's the furthest we've gotten, so we are getting close to the end now. Which uh, is, you know, um, beneficial for myself as it's nearly 3 a.m. I just noticed this one looks like a smiley face. Hee <laughs> hee. I beseech you, the Solaris Corporation, to send a security vessel and detain me. Fury and Moa are now dead, and I have no memory of the act. Oh, that's not worrying. And again, another phenomenal music track has now kicked in. I love this one. I forgot about this. It's been years since I've played this. Ah, oh, there's another mystery thing. We, we must be able to drill through these metal plates at some point, because we currently can't do it, and it's bugging me. Ah, and if that isn't symbolic enough, look at the radar. Keep going! Further down! Dig! The answers are there! The wheel is deeper! The surface is alive! Well, speaking of Aperture Science... Yeah, if I had picked one of the other characters which I had, you know, got most of my upgrades and stuff on already, which you can replay, start a new game with again, and buy more upgrades and stuff with that character because the money and things carry over... Uh, I mean, I could do that, but that would make it a little bit too easy at this point. I mean, arguably... It would be less work for me in the edit, because we are over two hours into this recording now, and if I was using a character which I had maxed out, then I'd be able to get through the game faster, and I wouldn't want... Um, wouldn't want? Uh, I wouldn't have to cut out as much in the edit, but that's less interesting for you, 
seeing uh, somebody who's got all the upgrades and stuff going through the game um, because, well, it doesn't show what the game is like from someone uh, who would maybe be starting fresh, so... Although, that being said, because we are over two hours in, would you hate me if I swapped over to one of those characters now so we could get through to the end? I don't have to complete the game as this character to unlock the one I don't have. So, would you hate me for that? No, I think you'd call it optimization for the sake of a Let's Play, and I am using that to justify myself, so... I'll be back in a moment. Oh, and the day's work. Right, and we're back in with the engineer from Team Fortress 2 with his extra upgrades and things, just to speed through and make things a little bit easier for ourselves going forward. Now, we've done most of the hard work as the previous character. We can go back and play as her again at another time if we want, but um, I figured, yeah, you know what? You've stuck. If you've stuck here long enough to give enough of a shit about this, then um, congratulations, you get bonus points, but we have been playing for over two hours. It is gone nearly 20 past three in the morning, and I'd like to show you the rest of the game rather than spending ages grinding out and maxing out my file size. We'll get through this, you and I. We will. I wouldn't necessarily call it cheating, like I say, I'll just call it optimization. Now let's get back down to where we were. I'm going to grind a bit on the way, of course. I've got the opportunity to do so with all these uh, extra upgrades and things that Carl or whatever his name is has. So it's going to get us more money, then I'm absolutely going to do it. Hmm. Now I need to see if I can work out how to get through the bits which we are currently stuck on, I suppose. That's the uh, next obstacle, because uh, I am not entirely sure I remember how to do it. But hey, let's get some electron bombs whilst we're here. Those will be handy. We need more of those. Oops, Daisy. Oh, there we are. Now, thankfully, Carl, because I played through my first Let's Play of... Well, I was say first Let's Play. Um, when I played this for the first time, my first playthrough of him, uh, which was quite some time ago, um, I completed the game as him quite a fair few times, which does mean he does have the most upgrades, which um, is handy now for this Let's Play, but I don't have all of them including the mid-air detonations to get in there. So I still can't, can't get to that one, but I don't, again, want to spend ages bloody grinding. Now, I don't think I've explored this side or this region of the map at all, actually, so we may be into for something over here, because there's stuff which I haven't explored yet. Ha ha, ding ding ding, speaking of, there's one. I might have to dig myself around a little bit, I've got to go around my ass to get to my elbow, but... There we are. Yes, with one final piece, we can unlock the ancient secrets of my fallen people. I don't know if we want to, mate. But... We'll keep going. I suppose, I've just got one more to find. So there we are, that did come in handy in the end. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of faffing about, but I'm sure you don't mind, you can forgive me. Or maybe you don't, I don't know, voice your disgust in the comment section. <laughs> I do read all the comments, even though I don't get very many, but it's because I don't get very many, it gives me time to read all of them. And to be fair, most of the time you guys are quite nice to me, so... You will forgive me, I'm sure. But if you don't, like I say, please feel free to tell me. I won't be offended I, uh, or upset, but you will be viscerally disappointed in me. I disappoint myself quite often, so... If it makes you feel any better, the feeling of disappointment in me is mutual. Right, and back down we go, I suppose. See what else we can find down here. 
get this last bloody item and finish this quest. I think this is the last quest as well, actually. Because once we get this, I believe Birdman will be like, Come and find me, and I will give you pleasures beyond your wildest dreams. Or whatever. So, if you're into Chloe Kalingus, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a guy out there for you. Now, it is kind of interesting that we do find some alien life. Because the chances of anything coming from Mars were a million to one, they said. Why, yes, that is my favourite musical of all time, before you ask. Actually, no, it, mm, it's a tie between that and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Did you expect anything less? Let's be honest. It's got to be down here somewhere. It's just got to be. There'll be one round here. I just I don't know where it is. It's just got to be. Where the hell is it? There it is. Found it. And I can dig through the bloody rocks. What hands? I don't like the sounds of this very much. Maybe... Maybe we should just turn around and go home. Again, another phenomenal, beautiful pieces of music. Uh, fucking good job, soundtrack guy. My word, this track is beautiful. And we found the last item. Let's just... This piece of music is gorgeous. With this final piece, the spirits of my ancestors can rest. Once again, we will live. Find me, and all the secrets of Mars will be revealed to you. And that has now unfortunately disappeared. But that is a gorgeous and beautiful piece of music which I absolutely love. And yes, so I was right. Find me and the secrets of Mars will be yours. I don't know if we want them. <laughs> like, what could the secrets of Mars possibly be to entice us? Now, we've run out of fuel. Also, I have only just noticed that the counter for our depth is freaking the fuck out. Look at that. Like, how far down are we? It, even it doesn't know anymore. Well, let's go back up a little bit. I don't know how long it's been doing that. I've only just noticed it. I forgot that it did that. Ah, so we get to about 12,000 feet and it starts freaking out. Okay. But I'm not sure how much further down we have to go in order to find him. Or what happens when we do. I do have a teleporter, actually. I might as well use it. So save me faffing about. There we are. I am so glad that you don't die when you run out of fuel anymore. Good grief. I'm actually going to go up a couple of layers to pick up some more explosives, because we've run out of most of the useful ones. I want more C4 because it explodes in a bigger radius than the TNT, but even then... It just, it's just, uh, gonna, it's gonna come in handy. Here we are, we made it. Alright, let's go into the... Repair ourselves and let's go into the shop. And pick up... fair few of those. And there goes pretty much most of our money. But that's fine. We're getting into the end game stretch now, so I'm not too worried about that. It's a shame you don't get anything out of drilling the rocks, actually, because it is quite a nice and helpful upgrade to have, but I suppose that would be quite strong if you did. I mean, there is an upgrade that lets you get oil out of just drilling the soil and getting random amounts of money from it which is the most abundant tile in the game. So that being said, 
I don't think it... I mean, I'm just demonstrating it here, so... I don't think it would be that overpowered if you had an upgrade but it got you money for drilling through the rocks. Just saying. So, I made it back down to Station Delta again. Like, look. How much money I get from this? It's crazy. But, yeah, I didn't design it. So we get to about 12,000 feet and our counter starts freaking out. And then we have no idea how much deeper we have to go. I suppose we'll find out together. I think it's about 15,000. Just based on a rough guesstimate of distances for in the game. But I, I could be wrong. I don't actually know. We also don't know how many people are left alive at this point. A lot of the other engineers and scientists and things and you're some of the other miners uh, they could be dead i mean the fellow who just contacted us um via the radio a few moments ago voluntarily terminated himself so we know he's not around anymore the lady on the science station she might still be there at the refueling station who's monitoring the seismic activity um, the guy who looks like he's from Ghostbusters, I'm pretty sure he's dead. He was one of the people which our lovely man with the alien hands murdered, along with a couple of other people. The guy who contacted us first at the beginning, we know is definitely dead. Um, the girl we were talking to herself did say that we're lab rats down here and she doesn't trust Solaris Corporation uh, and Abaddon himself was saying that they were experimenting on us so there is something definitely fishy going on but we're not entirely sure uh, and that crazy guy who messaged us about um, finding his secrets earlier on, uh, you may have forgotten that he contacted us. We don't know his whereabouts, he may still be alive, but I'm pretty sure everyone else is dead at this point. There's just us and, possi and possibly him left. Tiberius is obviously safe on mission control, but... You know, but he's not here, he's not on the final frontier on the surface of Mars exploring all these dangers, is he? So, he's not exactly helpful to us at this moment in time. And again, remember, this is supposed to be Cold War era. This is 1970s, 1980s. And look at what we're doing. It's, um, it's certainly an interesting timeline. Having spaceships and digging on the surface of Mars and alien first contact. I don't remember that happening in the 1970s. It's, it's such a, a gorgeous game. I really do love it. I don't know if that's come across. I really hope that it has, but my god, this game is absolutely astounding. It is so much fun to play. And the story which it crafts as well is gorgeous. It leaves you guessing. We've been talking about it this entire time, trying to work out what the fuck's going on. And it is just... It's a joy to experience, it really is. And I am loving it. And I haven't played it for several years, so it's fun to play through it and experience it. Not for the first time, but mostly fresh all over again, because it's been so long since I've played it. We are running low on fuel, but we must be getting near to the bottom now. We must be getting there. Must be getting close. Now this game has got its hooks and its claws in me again, I am absolutely going to do more playthroughs of this just in my own time now that uh, I've been playing it again once I finished the Let's Play, just because I enjoy it so much. So, uh, f uh, thank you, uh, past me, I suppose, for having the idea to come up with doing an episode on this. I've wanted to do a playthrough episode on this for fucking years anyway, but... I just haven't had the means to do it. Um, and I figured, you know, because it is October and this game is soft sci-fi or horror, and we've been playing a lot of horror games over the channel, a lot of space and digging themed horror games actually, it has just occurred to me that we've been doing, but nevertheless, I figured I would add it to the list because I've been wanting to do it for ages, so overall it has been a lot of fun replaying this. And we'll get to 
Yeah, we're about 12,000 feet down again, so the counter started freaking out. We'll get to the end and probably go for the ending which I don't have to unlock the last character which I haven't unlocked yet and just go for it. I don't know why I never unlocked him. Maybe I just took a break and then my ADHD brain got distracted by playing other games and I just forgot about it. Which is, you know, entirely possible. It happens all the time. I'll be playing through two or three things all at once and then I'll hyperfixate and focus on like just one in particular and then play nothing else for absolutely weeks. I really won't like when Advance Wars Reboot Camp came out, like you can understand me playing that for absolutely weeks at a time, fair enough, but I don't know, um I started um when the I started playing the Oh hello. Be an emperor at his side. Forsake the life before Okay, so we know he's still alive. Um, when the new Metal Slug Attack Reloaded came out on Switch, I hyperfixated on that and played that pretty much non-stop for... got maybe two months straight, I think, when that came out. Um, and oh, we found another smiley face, I've just noticed, right above us. <laughs> I put a lot of hours into that game, just straight away, literally loads, more than I care to admit. It will be me, none other! I will rebuild his civilization and live as the gods once did! Ruler of planets, taker of empires, a righteous scourge across the universe! Well, that gives us some lore about Abaddon there. They were interplanetary conquerors, possibly, in the past, question mark? But I'm pretty... It's, I'd say it's fairly safe to say that he's been driven a bit mad, too. But he is after the secrets as well, and he wants to uh, get to Abaddon's side, and he's been fully corrupted, I guess, if for uh, lack of a better term to describe it. We are slowly running out of fuel again. I have just no... Oh, there we are. Say so it has just popped off. But yeah, look how dense this terrain is. If I didn't have the drill through rocks upgrade, we could be here for literally fucking hours going back and forth. I'm glad I picked it up early. And also, kind of glad I changed character, admittedly. Would you still like me to be here recording this for another three hours, or are you glad that I'm going to be able to get through this bloody game now? Come on. You may have judged me a little bit before, but... It's coming in handy. It really is. I mean, I may be able to have afforded it at this point, going back, going back and forth, but it would have taken me forever. We're getting close, apparently. You know, we could still go back. No, we're in too deep at this point. We're not going back now. We've come too far. Look at the map there. You see that underneath me? That looks like... Yeah, the music just stopped. That's it. Whatever it is. We found it. Uh, and we are out of fuel. And our cargo is full. Well. I'm going to refuel. And I'm going to heal myself, because whatever the hell is waiting for us in there. Um, I was talking about it briefly, and I realised I got distracted, and I'm probably now coming back to it several hours later. But, in the original game, when you got to this point, uh, basically, Mr. Natus, that was his name, who was your supervisor on Mars in that game, he was actually the devil. Uh, Natus backwards is obviously Satan, and we can see there's something down there, good lord. Right, I probably shouldn't have wasted all my repair kits on doing that, but you know what, fuck it, we ball. But we have found a bottom. Now I'm going to teleport back up and do some final preparations, buying some more items before I go in there. So we'll be right back, viewers. Take to our surface and pour intrusive wounds into her majestic body. Dating from treasures not belonging to you. 
we will like to do once. Parasites to our world, stealing and destroying. Only too late do we realize our folly. We were digging our tomb. <laughs> I saw one of your ingenuity and resolve a likeness to my people. I entered your minds, changing their characters for the hope of recreating my people. The experiments were selfish. I want my people returned. I cannot stand the quiet. What is your choice of my sight? I am Avatar, last of the Russian Empire. I ask of you one thing. Help me. Take the final piece, return to the surface, and complete the construction of the neutron cannon that your predecessors failed to achieve. And together, let us save the universe from Earth's contagion. Okay, so quite a lot to unpack there. I'm not going to get too into it, but... Abaddon seems to be the last of his kind. The Neutron Cannon, talking about our predecessors, I guess some of the other people he drove mad into building some kind of super weapon. Uh, and at the beginning of the game, if you remember, um, Tiberius, or fake Tiberius, which was actually Abaddon in disguise, of course, was talking about the um, revolts and there was a revolution and saboteurs which were doing something, you know, and we're not entirely sure what, because of course real Tiberius and Solaris was being cut off from communications. So we don't know how long he's been influencing and controlling people's minds, but him conducting experiments on people also does explain why some of the other scientists and engineers thought that it was really Solaris Corporation doing it, because it was actually possibly him the entire time. But Solaris also never answered the calls for aid, unless he was blocking the signal. We did unblock the signal uh, when we picked up the Sputnik satellites, but Solaris still then never acknowledged people's further calls for help, which we encountered after that point, once the signal had been cleared, and never acknowledged it. Either they don't care, or I suppose maybe there is nothing they can do. And that then answers my point. If they have attack ships they can get from Earth to Mars so bloody quickly, why didn't they come to help? So now we have a choice. Will we assist Tiberius, who has not really been much help to us so far, although he hasn't been outwardly malicious, or do we help Abaddon? and rebel against Tiberius and the Solaris Corporation. I mean, I don't think we should help Abaddon because, well, he has driven our colleagues and co-workers mad and a lot of them have been murdered and destroyed by him. Or indirectly by him and his actions, but also Tiberius and Solaris Corporation has also contributed to that by leaving these people to die and abandoning them. So, ultimately, what would you do in this situation? There really is no moral choice. And given the one ending I don't have, actually, um, it doesn't really matter which one I go for. So I am just going to pick... Uh, I'm going to pick the Birdman just because. Oh. Oh no. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I figured out how to... Cr oh, lovely. Collect an Explodium and an Unobtainium. Please be careful. It's a bit late for that now. We found the super weapon. Or some kind of super weapon. I can't go through it. This is the boss battle at the end of the game. And, and depending on who you pick, if you choose to help Tiberius or Abaddon, the shape of this ship and what this ship is will change. I'm just, just pointing that out. Uh, if we enter the lava there, we will take damage. If we were playing as Laika, the space dog, we wouldn't, but now we've got to follow the craft and escape the lava. 
This final boss isn't too hard, but uh, you can easily get left behind if you're not quick enough in your reaction times, but I've done this a few times now. So we should be okay, all things considered. But, you know, I've said things before, haven't I? So best laid plans and all that, we'll see what happens. Again, another phenomenal piece of music. Bloody good work, soundtrack guy. Here we are. And we can refuel and heal here too. And yeah, this is Tiberius's ship. We can do damage to it with the explosives. Another reason why I bought so bloody many. Oh, and we got wedged in the corner. Now, I will slightly spoil this very, very short... Actually, no, I'm going to spoil it regardless. You're watching a bloody Let's Play. I will tell you now, really. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You can be chaotic good or chaotic evil or some form of chaotic neutral or true good or true evil, depending on how you want to view the alignments, regardless of which one you pick. Because you can choose to help Tiberius here, um, who we're fighting against, by fighting against Abaddon's craft instead. Um, but ultimately... Whatever it is he's offering, you cannot possibly as always guilt your conscience will bear of this horrific act. You'll see, I suppose. We're gonna get there. Very, very shortly, because we're very nearly at the surface now. This is not a particularly challenging boss fight, this is pretty easy so far, really. But, the boss fight is not really meant to be a challenge. Oh, shit. And he's got no dialogue for that. And we're back up to the surface. Oh, no. Abaddon activated the neutron cannon. And that is the other ship which we'd be fighting against if we chose to side with Tiberius, the Birdmobile, which is just above us. There isn't much time before it goes off. I can't seem to stop it. You're going to have to aim it at something. And now this is where we get another choice. Because ultimately the boss fight doesn't matter. Do we become the last human? Or do we commit xenocide? The world of our people? But we can eviscerate the last vestiges of an alien race. Our loved ones look to the sky, hopeful for us to come back, but I could control Mars. Endless blue skies, abundant with wildlife, or an entire planet which is ours for the taking. It's home. The riches still believe the surface. A place with rich history filled with diversity. A great red planet forever capturing our imagination. But if we don't aim at either of them, they both get destroyed instead. Which is the one ending to this game I haven't actually chose to do, and both Abaddon and Tiberius seem to be evil in some way potentially, from a certain point of view. And that's the one ending we never got, because, um, well, it's the one ending I never got, I should say. So I don't know what this dialogue is about to be, which we're about to get. Despite your inability to decide, you managed to escape, leaving the neutron cannon powered. Hoping for the best, you set out into space. The growing energy within the world-destroying weapon escaped, however, causing a shattering shockwave that cracked both Mars and Earth in two. Now alone, you float endlessly in space, staring into the black as your oxygen slowly disappears. Oh, there's a bleak ending. But... We unlock... A new character, which I did not have. He's the last character to get. And that was Super Motherloads. So, we could choose to have sided with Tiberius and then betrayed him and destroyed Earth. And Abaddon would be like, yes, now you will join me and we'll conquer the galaxy together. Or we could choose to side with him and then destroy Mars and Tiberius will all be like, congratulations, you saved all of us. Your efforts will be rewarded forever and we appreciate everything which you've done, blah, 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 blah. Or you could do the reverse. You can side with Abaddon 
and then betray him, and Tiberius will have some other related dialogue to that. Um, but I think it ends with him firing you. Eric Cheng, that's the name for the guy who did the sound and music. You did a fucking phenomenal job on that, mate. There we are. Um, or you could choose to side with Abaddon and just... Uh, yeah, so either, whichever way, really. You could choose to side with either one of them and either do what they want or betray them. So there are five possible endings to the game you can get to with different dialogue, if my maths on that is right. I don't know. It's very late. It has gone quarter past four in the morning as of the fact uh, at the moment, whilst I'm doing this voiceover with you now, but we have beat the game. I have wanted to do a Let's Play on this for fucking years. I absolutely adore this game, and we've been recording for over three hours! <laughs> uh, the delirium is setting in at this point, but this game was so much fun to play again. I don't think I've played this for about three or four years, and I'm surprised I remember it as well as I did. It might be a bit less than that, maybe two or three years, but either way, it's been a while since I've played it. But it has been an absolute blast to revisit this again. It's it's just been so good. The world it crafts, I love. The voice acting is really, really good. The music, as I've said, and I will say again, is absolutely gorgeous. It is so well done. There isn't a track in the game I don't like. The soundtrack is so fucking good. Um... But the graphics, the art style, the time period it's set in is very interesting. Remember, this is supposed to be the 1970s slash 1980s. Um, and we've got attack ships and mining corporations spread out across bloody uh, the surface of Mars and everything else. And neutron cannons and goodness knows what. So I don't know what kind of bloody alternative timeline this is, but it has been an interesting ride. I love the retro aesthetic that it's got going on, and it's just an absolute joyful experience to play, even if it is a little bit creepy, a little bit weird, people committing murder and uh, terminating their own existences aside, but it, yeah, like I said, it's a sci-fi horror game. Very soft on the horror, but... The original Motherload was a fantastic game as well, and I was a big fan of that, and I really, really did enjoy playing that back in the day. If you'd like us to maybe do an episode on that at some point, please do let me know, because it could be interesting to revisit the Flash game, which was such a big part of my childhood. But uh, a lot of Flash games really were a big part of my childhood, which is a shame that some of them, and many of them, are no longer playable because obviously Flash has been shut down. But there we go, that was Super Motherloads in its entirety, a game which I have wanted to play for so long and, well, uh, there was an option there to skip the credits but I think this is it because it has stayed on the screen for so long so we're just going to go back to the main menu. There we go. Thank you very much for joining me today. It has been... You finished? No, she isn't. You done? Can I do my outro now? Thanks. So, thank you very much for joining me today. It has been an absolute pleasure to have your company and revisiting this game. It's been a wonderful ride from start to finish. Uh, I don't know how long this episode is going to be in the end once I've edited it down, but I will do my very best. If it ends up being a long episode, so be it. I don't care. I've been wanting to do an episode on this for years, and I'm just going to do it, and it's going to be what it's going to be. Like the video if you did. Subscribe for more games in future. I'm not entirely sure what it is we're going to be playing next. Of course, we are still playing all well at the moment. Um, I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be uploading this, so we may be getting close to the end of that game, but you should go check that out because that is one of my favourite games ever made. It's wonderful. Let me know if you'd like us to do the Flash game original version of this with the Goldium edition, which is on Steam 2, and comment your thoughts about what you think about this in the comment section down below. My name has been Shiki, you have been awesome, and until I see you again, take care, stay safe, and to wrap for now. Goodbye.